Alright, what's up guys? Welcome back to the channel. Today I'm going to be showing you how to mix your beats. Uh, going to be showing you guys my process from when I have the pattern uh, completely done right before I'm going to split it and arrange it um, all the way to getting it ready to be mastered. But with mixing, there's just a lot of things that you can do to take your mix to the next level and really make your beats stand out. Um, so that's what I'm going to be going over today. So I've got my MIDI already here. Let's go ahead and take a listen. All right, so let's reset all of these so you can hear what it's like before I've adjusted the knobs. All right, so that's what it sounds like right now. It's pretty messy, um, and there's a lot we should do before we send it over to the mixer. So let's go ahead and get started. Obviously, we want our two main elements, uh, which are the two um, actual melody tracks. Uh, you want those to stand out the most. So here's what they sound like together. So you get the idea there. And then what I want to do is make sure that these drums are sitting nicely over top of everything. So I'm going to add in each drum track one by one and kind of get them leveled over here. Uh, get the channel volumes leveled until or right before I send it over to the mixer. So let's do that. So what I'm doing right now is I'm just going through each individual drum track and I'm making sure that they're leveled kind of nicely um, and that they're not going too crazy loud. Um, when, you, when you're mixing, you want to make sure you leave a lot of headroom. Um, you'll hear that word thrown around a lot in a lot of mixing tutorials. Uh, so you want to make sure you leave a lot of headroom um, when you're mixing. Um, this will make sure when you send it off to mastering that it's not overpowering and they actually have space to work with for each uh, individual track. Um, each individual stem. So let's keep doing that. Alright, so that's kind of taken care of. So the next thing that we're going to do is we're going to link all these to mixer tracks. By doing uh, To do that, you just hit Control L, and boom, everything is put into a mixer track. And uh, normally I will say get good at labeling um, all of your individual tracks. Uh, that's going to save you um, some headache uh, when mixing. I didn't do it. Uh, I apologize. But that's definitely something that you should um, try to do when you are mixing a track or any making any beat for that matter. So next thing that we're going to do is um, come over into our mixer. Let me maximize that. If you go to your master track, when you come over here, you're either going to see a uh, fruity limiter on it, just the standard one, and you don't want that. You're going to have fruity limiter right there. You don't want that. You want to get rid of that. Click that, hit delete. Next thing you're going to do is in your slot 10 or wherever you want. I guess it doesn't really matter too much. If you add more things to your master track, which you're probably not doing if you're just mixing your beat, um, you don't really have to worry about this. But in any slot, you need to come in and put Fruity Soft Clipper. This is going to make your beat hit so much harder. I promise you, if you do this, your beat's going to hit way harder. Listen to how the kick sounds. This is without the Soft Clipper. This is with the soft clipper. You hear that difference? It's just so much, uh, it hits so much harder. The drums are hitting so much harder. Everything's standing out a lot more. And your master track, it's only coming up to zero. And that's exactly what you want. It's not going over. It's not way below. The things that are supposed to make your track quote unquote clip, uh, that's what this fruity soft clipper is doing. You want to have that on every single track you make. I promise you it's going to make a world of difference. So next thing that we're going to do is we're going to come into each individual track and we're just going to do some basic EQing. 
So we'll start out with this. What we're gonna do is just drop in any EQ of you, your choice. I'm gonna use Fruity Parametric EQ, I love it. Um, it does everything I need it to do. So what you're gonna do, you're gonna fire up your Parametric EQ. You're gonna come up here to Presets, where it says Presets right there. You're gonna write, or uh, you're gonna click it, you're gonna get Default, and then this one. This one is the one that you want. What it has is a low pass filter over here and a high pass filter back here. So what you wanna do is on your tracks, like the, uh, this is a pad for example, see all that noise in there. What you wanna do is you wanna get rid of that because you know what's gonna be hitting there is your 808. You wanna get rid of that. So you're gonna bring it forward. Now you don't, I see a lot of people doing this, you don't wanna bring it up too much because then you lose a lot of the sound here. You lose so much. And then another thing you can do is um, if you don't want to just have a high pass and a low pass filter, what you can do is just come back here to the default and just pull this all the way down and just make your own. Um, and then you also want to cut out the high frequencies up here. You can't see a lot, but there is some noise. Uh, you want to get rid of that because one, it makes it a lot easier on your CPU when you don't have to worry about all those extra frequencies. Um, and then another thing that it's going to do is all those noises that you can't hear, that's stuff that can muddy up your beat whether you realize it or not. Um, your snares, your hi-hats are going to have a lot of those really high frequencies, um, so you want to make sure to get rid of those. So pull this down a little bit, not a ton. You pull it down, you pull it down too much, and you start losing some of that. So you just want to make sure that you pull it down until right before you start hearing a difference. I think right there is good. And then another thing I'm going to do, these mid-tones are hitting a little harsh. Um, so I'm going to clean that up a bit. You don't want to take out too much because then your track's starting to lose some of its uh, some of its feel, some of its character. So the next thing that I'm going to do, I like to do this on like my pads and kind of my chords and stuff. Um, what you're going to do is come over here and you're going to add a stereo shaper right here. And so basically what this does is when you have chords like this or any instrument for, for, uh, for example, um, if you pull these all the way down, you only hear things on the left and the right. You don't hear anything in the middle. You don't want that, but you want to have it. I usually leave these pretty much right where they are. Sometimes I mess around with them, but you want to add some space. Uh, it's as if um, you're listening, say you're listening to a song and you hear the sound uh, from a left speaker and a right speaker and it's coming at you. Uh, you want it to be like that surround sound feel. Um, it gives your track a lot of character and a lot of space. So I'm just going to bring these up a bit. All right, so that's good. Um, and then another thing you wanna do is look over here and see where your track's coming up to. It's pretty much good right there. I'm not gonna mess with the volume right now. I might change it later. Um, mixing is a very dynamic uh, thing. So you wanna make sure that uh, <clears throat> it's not coming up too high. If you turn it up all the way, you see it's coming up. It's coming up really high. Um, and when you start bringing all these other instruments in, it's gonna start clipping. So I'm gonna do the same thing for the next track. And that's our melody. So we want to make sure that you can hear that perfectly. You don't want to be able to not hear it at all. So the next thing that we're going to do is, uh, next thing that we're going to do is come over to our hat. See, that's pretty loud. Um, and then another thing I'm going to do, I do this for mainly hats and, um, like snares. You don't want those to have too much space. Um, 
those are tracks that you should hear in tight. Um, <clears throat> So uh, what we're going to do, you can add a shaper um, to that too and pull it in tight. I'm not going to do that for the sake of time. Um, and now we're going to do the same for our snare. That snare's hitting really hard, so you want to make sure to bring it down. If I leave it where it was, it's pushing past 15, coming up on 12 there. So you want to bring it down a little bit. The, your drums, the, you'll be able to hear your drums, don't worry. Um, and make sure that you're adding EQs to these as well. Um, It'll really cut down on some of that extra noise. Alright, and now for the 808, um, what I usually do is um, I'll throw an EQ in there and I'm going to cut out a lot of the high ends. Obviously there's, uh, there's sound data that you need in there, um, that's what makes this kick sound so punchy. If I were to get rid of all this, it's going to sound like this. Which sounds fine if that's the sound that you're going for, but you want to leave some of that in there. Um, in your 808 if you destroy your 808 a little too much then it's gonna it's gonna really bring back your track um, in that sound that you had in the original 808 sample there we go I think I like that see that kick that kicks hitting really really hard it's almost too hard it's going over zero you don't want that trust me even if you pull the volume down it's still gonna hit um, I know a lot of producers are like oh I want my kicks to just go absolutely crazy hard it, that's fine but you definitely want to make sure that it's not going too hard because it's gonna clip and it's not gonna sound good in your final mix I hear a lot of beats uh, that are just not mixed very well and the kicks are just way too loud um, it sounds bad and your artist isn't going to like that if you're making beats for an artist they're not going to like hearing that crazy clipping sound so that's hitting right about zero that that should be plenty gonna mix this real quick just get an eq on it cut out some of those highs that's fine. All right, let's hear our drums all together without the 808. With the 808. All right, and now all together. And then now that everything's in there, you can start playing with it a little bit. This is a bit of an advanced technique, 
But if you want to do it, I'm going to put you guys on to one of my favorite plugins, and it's called Pink. And you can hear how obnoxious that sound is. But what you're going to do, I'm not going to do it for you right now because um, it's really, really, really loud, and you guys would dislike this video so much if I did it. Um, but you turn this on, and what you're going to do is you turn this on, and you're going to individually select each track, and you're going to turn the track up just to where you can barely hear it over the pink noise. So I'll give you an example. It's going to make your eardrums burst, but just bear with me. And then what's going to happen now, if you take a listen. What a great mix. I, I think that's really, really solid. Uh, that, that VST, seriously, it's free. Go download this right now. This is going to take your mixing to an entirely new level. It's called Pink. Literally just search Pink VST. It is free. It's amazing. I love this thing. It makes mixing so stinking easy. Uh, it's totally free. I, I honestly think every single producer, if you're starting out making beats, this is a great way to start getting an ear for mixing. I use it as a reference. Um, it's not going to be perfect every single time, but if you use it, uh, the result is going to be a great reference track for you to start adjusting the mix from there. Um, you can do that right when you drop everything into the mixer channel and then go from there. But seriously, it is an amazing VST. I think every single one of you that are watching this video should get it right now. Uh, I'm not sponsored by them or anything. I just really think it's a great product. Um, all right. So uh, if you've stuck around this long, thanks for watching. Um, if you learned anything in this video, please let me know in the comments below. I seriously, I'm here to help you guys out. I'm here to show you guys uh, how to make your beats better. Um, I'm posting tutorials really frequently. Um, so if you learned anything, please let me know in the comments below. Be sure to like, comment, subscribe. Um, follow me on Instagram. I'll help you. So um, if you stuck around this long, thanks. And I'll see you in the next one. Peace.